Okay, so hello everyone and thanks for the introduction. Uh, this is Sahai Lee and I'm a postdoc from Wake Forest School of Medicine. So I really appreciate this opportunity to share my work. So the title of my presentation is Prefrontal and Parietal Neural Activity Mediates Working Memory Judgments. Um, as we know, the dorsolateral prefrontal cortex has been acting as the seat of higher cognitive functions, such as working memory. However, in recent years, the posterior parietal cortex has been found to be activated during working memory tasks. So in our project, we adjust the role of these two areas on categorical judgment based on information in working memory. So first, I would like to introduce the bumper tractor computational model. So the model proposed the mechanism of how information is maintained in working memory. And this model has been successfully used to explain the behaviors in delay response working memory task. So simulation of a such model shows the random shift of network activity during the delay period. Then in, in panel B and C, uh, the black triangle indicates uh, the encoded location of the stimulus in network, while the red triangle indicates the decoded location at the end of the delay. So deviation between red and black triangles could lead to behavior deviation. So previous work has shown that the fluctuations of neural activity in PFC could lead to the behavior deviation in the ODR task. And the behavior activity correlates with the drift of neural activity as the bumper tractor model predicts. So it emphasized the significance of prefrontal cortex in working memory tasks. However, it has been argued by other investigators that neural activity in the ODR task reflects the motor preparation instead of working memory information. So it motivates us to devise a task requiring categorical judgments. So additionally, in our project, we want to see if only PFC can mediate behavior outputs as bumper chapter model predicts. So how about other areas such as PPC, since they are also activated during the working memory task. So we focus on these two areas in our project. So here is our new working memory task, which requires categorical judgments. We call it match stay non match go task. We trained our monkeys to operate this task. So the task starts with fixation. The first queue appeared, followed by a three second delay. Then the second queue appeared. If the first and second queue are not at the same location, it's a non match child, and the monkeys should secure to location of second queue. If first and second queue are at same location, subjects should hold fixation as a response. So we included four sets of stimuli with different angle distance reflecting various difficulties. So here are our results. So first of all, we want to make sure our task could work. So the upper two panels showed performance in the task and within smaller angular distance between the two stimuli, it's more difficult for subjects to respond. We also calculated sensitivity index for the behavior results and it showed with smaller angular distance between two stimuli, it's harder for subjects to detect the difference. So here we plotted the PSTH for neurons to examine if they had task specific activity. So for each recording session, we started with the ODR task and then we switched the match the non match goal task. So we used ODR task to help us determine the neurons receptive field. Here are the PSTH for PFC and PBC neurons in both tasks. It showed similar task specific responses in both areas.
So next, I would like to introduce why we set up the task in this way. So in correct answer child, after monkey saw the first cue, they hold information in working memory and observe the second one. Then they compare the second one to the information in their working memory and respond accordingly. However, monkeys make, make mistakes. In non-match trials, even if two cues are at different locations, the subject responded as a match child, which means the subject believed the two stimuli are at same location. But why does it happen? So as the model predicted, during the delay period, the population activity may shift from its original location, which lead to inaccurate information. So after monkeys saw the second cue, monkeys compared the second cue to the inaccurate information in working memory and made incorrect judgments. And in the following panels, our hypothesis explained what we expect to observe at single neuron level. So for B, in this example neuron, based on its tuning curve, if the first cue appear at location one, which can invoke highest response, and second cue appear at non-preferred locations, such as location two. In error non-match trials, monkeys responded as a match trial, which means they believe the two stimuli are at the same location. When it happens, our model predicts it's due to the neural activity shift. In this example, during the delay, the fine rate shifted downwards from the preferred location one to the non-preferred location two. So the decoded location shifted from location one to the location two, which overlap with location of the second queue. It caused the subject to believe the two stimuli are at the same location and subjects responded as a match child, which is wrong. And vice versa, in panel C, if the first queue appear at non-preferred location one, while the second queue appear at the preferred location two. In error non-match trials, as the model predicts, it should happen that the neuronal finally shifted up to the location of the second queue. It less subjects to believe the two stimuli appear at the same location. So those are just our hypotheses. More importantly, we want to check if our data support our hypothesis. So we start with the single neuron data and here the example neuron. So I circle out two red dots and I'm going to start with the left one first. So for left example, we can see the fine rate invoked by the first queue is pretty low by checking the blue line. So location of the second queue is at zero degree and its fine rate is marked as black star. In error child, subjects make mistakes because they believe the two stimuli are at the same location and our model predicted is due to the neural activity shift to the fine rate of the second stimulus. So we should see the neural activity shift up in the error child towards, towards the non-match queue. And the real data showed us that the fine rate in error child is higher and closer to non-match queue, which is consistent with our hypothesis and vice versa. For the right example, it showed neuronal responses drifted down, which is also following our hypothesis. So that was single neuron result. And here are the average results from PFC and PPC population. So first, first uh, if uh, if the first queue involved a higher firing rates than the second queue, we call it prefer queue condition. So for PFC, we see in this condition, the average firing rate in crack trials are higher than the firing rate in error trials, which means in error trials, the firing rate drifts down. It's exactly what our model predicts. And surprisingly, PPC showed very similar results. Their activity also drifts down in error trials. But the arguments that the loss of working memory information could be due to diminish of fine rate during the delay. So subjects could make mistakes due to insufficient working memory information. So second part of the result gave us more insight. So the opposite situation called non-preferred queue. If the first queue appear at lower fine rates, 
uh, at this condition, it means the final rate will drift up in average house. Indeed, as for result from PFC, the last one second delay activity in crash house is lower than the one in average house, which means in average house, the activity drift up, which is exactly the same as our hypothesis predicts. What's more, we also find PPC activity fits this hypothesis as same good as PFC. So we also examine the distributions of neural activity in crack and error child. So in panel A and C, X axis represents the firing rate in error child and Y axis indicates the last one second delay firing rate in crack child. So as our model predicts, in preferred Q condition, we expect the last stage delay period activity in crack child should be higher than the error child. So it should be the area above the dash line and we can see for both PFC and PBC neurons, most neurons located above the dash line. As for panel B and D, in non-preferred condition, our model predicts the fine rates should be uh, at opposite condition. Um, so we should expect the neurons uh, in the area under the dash line. And we can see for both PFC and PBC neurons, most neurons located under the dash line as the model predicted. So we also calculate average uh, choice probability. So it tells us how good a neuron can predict the choice from a neuron's firing rate. So for PFC, we can see both preferred and non-preferred Q condition. Neurons show significant difference from the randomness during the last stage of delay period. It shows that PFC activity at last stage of delay period could predict the animal behavior we got similar result on PPC as well. At both conditions, at last stage of delay period, PPC activity could strongly predict the behavior outputs. A summary of our project. So at first, our novel working memory tasks really work and it can examine how neuronal firing rates modulate working memory recall choice. It showed neural activity mediating work behavior output in various working memory tasks and it eliminated the possibility of neural activity underlying the motor preparation. Second, we find out the firing rates of most PFC and PBC neurons shift in error child, as the bump protractor model predicts. Third, we detected significant choice probability at late stage of delay period from both areas. And our conclusion is that both areas uh, neuron activity could be predictive of a subject's remember location in our newly designed match state non match goal task. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Um, thank you very much. Uh, cool data, certainly. Um, I was wondering about a couple of things. Um, I don't, if there's any questions, please do have them come in. And otherwise I'll, uh, I'll get started at least um, for now. So you mentioned that both PFC and, and PBC could be potentially related to the errors um, that you're seeing, right? They are obviously, you know, pretty distant areas from each other. Um, is there any way for you to kind of look into where these errors actually are? You know, can you use any causal relationships or anything like that? Sorry, we, we can't hear you, you're muted right now. Okay, uh, sorry, I have a little echo, but uh, I think you are trying to say like, if we can find like correlation between these two areas. Well, so basically you, you're saying that the errors that you, you find in, in behavior, you can, you can relate that to firing rate in either PFC or in, in parietal areas, right? Um, well, you know, isn't it, is it likely that it, it's really due to both of them? Or do you think one of them is, is somehow Spurious, uh, could you go in and do like causal uh, manipulations, anything like that? Or, I mean, that's obviously quite a tricky thing to do. Um, actually, uh, actually, uh, we at the very beginning we saw PFC will be like more dominant role, but like with our project is going on, we find 
um, it's not like what we thought. I, it's more like the two areas are acting like more uh, similar roles. Maybe they have different like uh, specialized areas, but uh, they're more like uh, equal or same level areas in the working memory uh, field. Okay. We have a question from the uh, audience. Um, question is very interesting. Were the, were the simultaneous recordings in PVC and PFC name session also at the width of the tuning curves broader in say in the PFC? So were the simultaneous recording in PV, P, PVC and PFC and were the widths of the tuning curves broader? I think there might be a bit of delay in the uh, in the audio right now. Um, sorry, we might have to take that at, and uh, maybe put that in the um, in the chat instead, and then uh, move on to the next speaker instead. Sorry about that. Okay. Sorry. Thank you. No problem. Uh, Junda, if you're ready.